Welcome to this course, Introduction to Cybersecurity Literacy. This is Lesson 21, Online Shopping. Online shopping is big business. With so much money being exchanged, it's no surprise that many criminals target online shoppers. Many of the security issues that we have discussed previously are relevant to online shoppers. In this video, we'll address 11 online shopping security issues. Avoiding malware, using strong passwords, using trusted computers, avoiding unsecure wireless networks, avoiding malicious adware, avoiding phishing websites, distinguishing legitimate retailers from illegitimate ones, using a link scanner, researching a retailer, withholding information, and finally, paying with plastic. Online shopping issue number one is avoiding malware. In previous lessons, we talked about how to protect yourself from a number of different kinds of malware. Viruses, worms, Trojan horses, and bots. Some malware attacks are directed specifically at online shoppers. So, before you shop online, it's a good idea to make sure that you're employing the defense in depth strategy outlined in lesson 18 of this series. Do you remember what that strategy entails? Back up your data, run a firewall, make sure that your software patches are all up to date, run antivirus software, represented here by a guard dog that blocks viruses from getting into a computer, and be an educated user, somebody who knows the old threats, but who also keeps up with new threats as they appear in the news. I won't say much more about these layers of defense here, if you would like to review them in more detail, you can go ahead and rewatch Lesson 18 in this series, which is titled Layers of Defense Against Malware. Online shopping security issue number two is using strong passwords. Online shopping accounts are sensitive accounts. Many of them grant users access to your credit card information. They also usually have a shipping address on file, which would tell somebody where you live. And because they might keep a record of your purchases, these accounts also give users an idea of how much money you spend and what kinds of valuables you might have in your house. So it's important to use a strong password if you set up an online account with a retailer. Strong passwords make it more difficult for cyber criminals to compromise your shopping accounts. Lesson 11 gave you advice for creating strong passwords. Rather than rehash all of that advice here, I'm going to refer you back to that lesson. Online shopping security issue number three is using trusted computers. Refrain from doing your online shopping or from divulging any financial information at all on untrusted computers, especially on public computers. It's relatively easy for a cyber criminal to install key loggers onto a computer. A key logger can record all of the keystrokes that you make on a computer and so it picks up things like usernames, passwords, and credit card information that you plug into a website. Furthermore, there are other kinds of spyware that could potentially lurk on untrusted computers. You don't want anybody spying on your financial transactions, so stick to private computers that you trust. Online shopping security issue number four is unsecure wireless networks. We have already discussed some of the dangers of unsecured wireless networks, and we will discuss them in even more detail in upcoming lessons. One of the main security issues that comes along with unsecured wireless networks is wireless sniffing, which is the practice of intercepting information traveling between a computer and a wireless router. Because of these dangers, it's best not to shop on unsecured wireless connections. Online shopping security issue number five is malicious adware. In lesson 16, we touched on the dangers of malicious adware. We explained that many advertisements are legitimate, but some advertisements aren't. Malicious advertisements try to trick people into clicking on them. And then those advertisements direct people to a malicious website, such as a phishing website or a website containing a drive-by download. So be shrewd. If an ad presents an offer that's too good to be true, then it's probably not a legitimate offer. Before you click on any ads, always hover your mouse arrow over the link to check the URL that the link navigates to. 
If an advertisement says that it's taking you to, say, an Amazon or an eBay affiliated web page, but then the URL it displays is not from Amazon.com or eBay.com, then you should not click on the advertisement. In fact, it's a good idea not to ever shop on a web page that you navigated to through clicking on a hyperlink. It's better to type the retailer's URL into the address bar for yourself. This will give you an added layer of assurance that you're shopping where you want to shop. Online shopping security issue number six is phishing websites. In lessons 10 and 14, we touched on the dangers of phishing. Phishing is a trick where a cyber criminal tries to convince a victim to divulge his or her sensitive information, such as usernames, passwords, or bank routing numbers. We examined a phishing email which claimed to be from Chase Bank, but which really contained links to a website that was intended to steal users' banking information. Cyber criminals will do the same trick with online retailers. They will send out emails containing links to fake retail web pages that are intended to trick you into divulging login information or banking information. Here's an example of a phishing email claiming to offer popular products at deep, deep discounts, which are well below market value. If you get emails like this, just delete them. They are probably phishing emails. Legitimate businesses won't discount their goods 80 or 90% from market value. Successful companies don't become successful by losing money on every single sale that they make. Online shopping security issue number seven is distinguishing legitimate retailers from illegitimate ones. How can you tell the difference between a legitimate and an illegitimate retailer? I just mentioned that some illegitimate retailers will claim to sell popular, high-demand goods for incredible discounts, but there are other cues to look for when assessing a retailer. Here's the homepage for a fictional retailer, lowlowprices.com. Let's pretend for a minute that Low Low Prices is a real, legitimate retailer. How could you be sure that this is the real homepage for Low Low Prices? One obvious cue is to check the URL up in the address bar. If you wish to shop at lowlowprices.com, but the URL says something different, like lowlowprices.cn, then you should suspect that the page that you're on is a counterfeit. Another cue to look for is HTTPS. Legitimate retailers should always use HTTPS to log you into your account or to accept payments. Any website that does not use HTTPS for these functions is unsafe and probably malicious. Now, some malicious websites will go so far as to use HTTPS. What this means is that the presence of HTTPS is not a foolproof assurance that the website is trustworthy. However, you can take the absence of HTTPS as an assurance that the website is not trustworthy. Even if a retailer has only good intentions, if they don't use HTTPS, especially for logging in and for accepting payments, you know immediately that they're not using adequate security practices. Stay away from such retailers. Another cue to look for is whether a retailer asks for too much information. For example, retailers don't need to know your social security number to complete a transaction. If they ask for it, there's a good chance that they are up to no good. Online shopping security issue number eight is using a link scanner. One tool that can help you to shop more safely is a link scanner. So what's a link scanner? Link scanners are applications that you can add onto your web browser. Link scanners check hyperlinks against a security database, and they tell you if there's any known security issues with the web pages associated with each hyperlink. There are several link scanners to choose from. One popular example is Web of Trust. Web of Trust displays color-coded circles next to hyperlinks. These circles tell you whether or not the web page has a good security reputation. For example, I have Googled the phrase Iowa State University Information Security. Web of Trust has marked each of the top five hits with a green circle. This tells us that these links have a good security reputation. Of course, this isn't an absolute guarantee. Web of Trust is capable of making mistakes. But the green circle is a strong indicator that the website is probably trustworthy. But here, I have Googled the phrase free iPad. The first hit is marked with a red circle, which means that the link is known to be untrustworthy. The second hit is marked with a gray circle, 
which means that Web of Trust has little or no information about this link. The website has no reputation, one way or the other. The third hit is marked with a green circle, which means that Web of Trust users have reported that this web page is trustworthy. But I have to say, I'm skeptical of this particular link. First off, notice that the URL for this web page is doctorsandtobacco.org. I don't know anything about that URL, but I'm having a hard time seeing what Doctors and Tobacco would have to do with free iPads. We can also see from the Google preview that this page includes the sentence, everyone who participates has over 40% chance to win a free Apple iPad. That promise is obviously too good to be true, so I think common sense dictates that we should avoid this link, even though Web of Trust has marked the link as safe. If we want to learn more about a link's rating on Web of Trust, we can click on the circle next to the link. This takes us to a Web of Trust scorecard page for that link. Here, we find a clue that might explain why such a fishy looking link has a good rating from Web of Trust. We see here that Web of Trust has very low confidence in this rating. So as far as Web of Trust knows, this is a safe link but Web of Trust admits that it doesn't yet have very good information on this particular link. It's possible that this link is a scam, and the scammers themselves could be the ones who gave the link such a high rating. Online shopping security issue number nine is researching a retailer. If you would like to make a purchase through a retailer that you've never used before, you should do a little research on the retailer before giving them any of your financial information. Here are some things to look for. First, their website should have a phone number. Legitimate businesses will usually have a phone number that you can call so that you can ask about their business practices. Second, the retailer should have a physical location somewhere, at least an office or a warehouse. So where are they based? If they don't have a physical location, then they're likely to be illegitimate. Third, you should look up some online reviews of the retailer. If other people have shopped there before, then some of them have probably left reviews somewhere online. Try Googling them. But be careful. Sometimes scammers will write positive reviews of themselves and then post those reviews online. Online shopping security issue number 10 is withholding information. Another way to protect your sensitive information is to give retailers as little information as possible. Don't show them everything about you hold back as much as you can. Even if you trust a retailer, it's always a good idea to withhold as much information from them as you can. If they ask for information that's not required to make a purchase, such as your date of birth or your gender, withhold that information. In all probability, they just want that information so that they can use it to direct ads at you anyway. So there's no harm in holding it back. And if a retailer asks for your social security number, stop interacting with that retailer immediately. Social security numbers are never necessary to make a purchase. Only crooks ask for a social security number to complete a purchase. Online shopping issue number 11 is shopping with plastic. You can further protect yourself by opting to shop with a credit card instead of a debit card. There is inherently nothing more secure about credit card technology but it's an accident of American legal history that credit cards offer better fraud protection than debit cards do. Because of the way that federal laws ended up being written over time, consumers are better protected from credit card fraud than they are from debit card fraud. As you can see in this table, both credit card users and debit card users are not liable for fraud if the fraud is reported before the stolen card is actually used. So you're safe if you notice that your credit card is missing and report it as missing before somebody else uses it. But a cardholder may be held liable if the fraud is only reported after the card is used. Users of either kind of card are only legally liable for up to $50 worth of expenses if the fraud is reported within two business days. However, there's a sharp jump after two business days for debit card users. Debit card users are legally liable for up to $500 of fraudulent charges if the fraud is reported within 2 to 60 business days. Credit card users, though, they are still liable for only up to $50. It's worth noticing here that in either case, after 60 business days, you could be liable for unlimited amounts of fraudulent charges. 
Furthermore, it's a good idea to check your credit card statement and your debit card statement once a week. Now, your bank or your credit card company has software to help them to detect fraudulent charges. Now, this is convenient for you, but it's still important for you to monitor your own debit and your own credit card accounts. Criminals know that banks and consumers are more likely to notice large, conspicuous purchases, so sometimes they'll try to limit themselves to smaller, less noticeable purchases so that they can use the stolen card for a long time before anybody notices. So check your statements for yourself, too, to make sure that your bank hasn't missed something. Okay, that's all the advice I have for you with regards to online shopping. To briefly review, we addressed 11 issues. Avoiding malware. Using strong passwords. Using trusted computers. Avoiding unsecure wireless networks. Avoiding malicious adware. Avoiding phishing websites. Distinguishing legitimate retailers from illegitimate ones using a link scanner, researching a retailer, withholding information, and paying with plastic. In the next lesson, we will begin discussing a major issue in cybersecurity, that is wireless network security.